I was going to Barbuda, my first time going to our sister island, which is not good. I've traveled a few times around the world. Around the world, I've been to the States, been to several Caribbean islands, never been to Barbuda. So there was a concert going on over there, and I said, let me go over, you know? Uh, sometimes even men of God can make mistakes. And the mistake that I made, I decided to go to Barbuda on the ferry. And uh, about halfway out on the ferry, <laughs> boy, I don't know what I don't know what happened between my stomach and my mouth, but I told them fall out. And everything I had the morning for breakfast went overboard on the boat. My head began to spin. And uh, <laughs> it was so bad that uh, when I reached the first thing, I told the captain because I had paid for I had paid for a two way. And as soon as I reached, I tell the captain, "Hey, I catch in the plane and go back, brother. So let's give me a refund because I'm not going back on this thing again." <laughs> By the grace of God, I am. Um, the man encouraged me, tell me about on the way back you see dolphins. And some give me some big chat, can you wanna give me a refund? So I said, you know what? Never really see a dolphin, let me go back over, you know. And on the way back over, I, I saw a whale. We saw a whale on the way over. And I took some medication and um, much prayer preparation and I made it back much better over. Well God spoke to me with that. On the way over, when the boat halfway between Antigua and Barbuda, I felt so, so bad. But I found myself in a predicament. Here am I halfway between Antigua and Barbuda, and I am seasick. But what do I do? I can't tell the boatman turn back. Because a lot of people on the boat are going to turn back for me. And even if you go back, I'm still going to be sick. Can't tell the man to stop the boat because I can't tell the ocean to stop the rocking. Because the ocean is going to listen to me. I found myself out there. And uh, I had no choice but to ride out the boat trip. I found myself with no other choice. And I'll be, to be honest, people and they laugh, you know, if you want thing. People there, I they don't feel good, I vomit to people watching me and laughing and giggling, you know? And uh, I had no choice. Embarrassed, funny, out on the boat, don't feel good. But at that point, there was nothing I could do but ride out this boat ride. I feel very much the same way in God sometimes. Sometimes we are on this cruise line named Jesus. And sometimes you go out and in the midst of it there arises some storms in your Christian life. And you can't go back. Well, for some of us, going back in the world is not an option. Amen? Amen? For some of us, going back is not an option. And where we were, we couldn't see Barbuda yet. So sometimes you don't even know where God is carrying you. But, and, and for some of us, we say, Lord, it's uncomfortable, it's tight, bank account tight, life tight, don't feel so good. But Lord, going back is not an option. So I have made up my mind to ride out this storm. And I want to encourage you this morning. Ride whatever season and whatever storm God is carrying you through. Ride it out. Halfway through, I felt so bad. And I just couldn't do anything about it. And sometimes in God, you're going to find yourself restricted and comfortable. And some people will turn around their rowboat and row back to sin. I want to encourage you. 
we in this for the penny, we in it for the pound. We going on in God, and though he slay us, yet will we trust him. Amen? Amen. I just want to, I, I don't know about you, but that's how I feel. I am resolved. Um, I don't just say it from the pulpit. I say it at home to my wife. Honey, I am in this thing till the end. Amen. If I'm going down, I'm going down in faith. Not going down. Let, let the records in heaven declare that Matthew Nice went down fighting. Hmm? Hallelujah. I challenge you this morning, church. We gotta be. We have to make up our mind. We in this thing right to the end. That's the only way we're gonna get victory. Oh, hallelujah! Anybody remember this? Um, this gentleman that was in. He was in politics. Um, his, name, his name Kennedy. A gentleman in the states by the name of Kennedy. Do you know this man was diagnosed with um, brain cancer? He died, he and the President Obama, he died just before, um, just after Obama was elected. Kennedy, one of them old Democrats. Kennedy. He had a big funeral for him when he died. But even after this, this man was so committed to politics and to the Democrats, even when this man was diagnosed with brain cancer, terminal, this man get up and go out and campaign for Obama up on the stage with his little um, cane for hold him up, saying vote for Obama. He stood up for politics right down till the very end. I want to challenge this man. We have to stand up for our God right down to the very end. We can't make God look bad. He has done so much for us. Hell or high, or high water, no matter what it is, is Jesus. Boat sink, Jesus. Boat float, Jesus. Everything, Jesus. And that's the kind of attitude that is needed for us to make it over to the other side. I want to start this morning and challenge you. Make up your mind. I love uh, Elisha so much. Elisha, Elisha, when he met Elijah, Elijah told Elisha, Boy, don't follow me. Go ahead. Don't walk behind me. And you know what Elisha did? Elisha got up, took his, um, his business, his um, cattle and uh, plow, break up the plow, Light the plow on fire, kill the cow and barbecue the cow over the fire. He said, Elijah, nothing there to go back to. So are you and God alone? He was not deterred by a little discouragement. Some of us, imagine if, if I came here morning, I told you, now come back here. Eugene, come back here. I don't want to see you here. Now come back here. <laughs> you want to pass the thought to me? <laughs> come here, divide the thing. But now nah, come back. But you see, here Elisha say, Me want some of that. I see the power and the presence of God, and my now nah, move. Let me tell you, Elisha get up and broke up. Broke up his thing and say, My now nah, move. And God is kind some Christians now with that same spirit. God, my now nah, move. Come what me, I am not moving. Broke up that old thing, man. Cause I'm not going back there. Cut off, burn the little black book with the phone numbers. Because I'm not calling any of them. If I'm going to starve, I'm going to starve in Jesus. <laughs> that is the mentality that God wants. That if God don't come by 12 o'clock, you pick up the phone by... I've been in something in the um, same thing we're studying now in First Samuel. Saul made a tragic error. Saul was waiting on Samuel to come and to prepare the offering before God. And because the people were mumbling and there was fear, 
he decided to take things into his own hands and go and light this thing and half up this thing. And when Samuel came, the wrath of Samuel and of God fell on Saul. And that's when Samuel told him, God going to take this kingdom from you. The pressure and the situation made him act foolishly. Don't panic. Don't do anything stupid because of pressure. Because as soon as he finished doing it, that's when Samuel turned the corner. Sometimes our breakthrough just right around the corner and we turn around and do foolishness just before. Church, I just want to encourage you, I want to challenge you, I want to encourage you that God is always on time. God knows what he is about and the victory is ours, but only for those who are willing to endure to the end. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Amen? Rug it up, man. Rug it up. Because this ride might get bumpy before the end. But we are determined to go right down to the end. Take out your Bibles with me. Turn to the book of 1 Samuel. Chapter. We start at. As we, as we continue.